So, uh, Natalie, you have the floor. Oh, Gerhardt, that was great. I, um, I am constantly working on my mindset, and I really resonated with um, one of the interviews you shared about constantly trying to get better, and I, I was listening and wanted to insert so many times because music is such a great metaphor for um, so many things we're trying to improve on and a really great tool to learn to be a better leader um, or to motivate yourself, to inspire yourself to be a better leader and um, to help your team. And I don't know if all of you lead teams. Um, I know some of you were talking about just the re reworked roles you're playing in your family during quarantine. And I think um, music can even help you through that, which then frees you up <laughs> to do the thing that you're really trying uh, to work on from home and, and whatnot. So let me start um, by introducing myself, I guess, a little bit. Um, and forgive me, I've never really given a class like this over the internet. so. Um, this is exciting and a challenge for me and um, feel free to chime in. I don't have a slideshow, <laughs> but I've got lots to share with you guys. Um, so I'm from New York City too. I know there's another New Yorker here, uh, born and raised in New York City. And I grew up um, in the West Village and my parents were both artists. Um, so it was really promote, the arts were really instilled in me. Um, and I went to the High School of Performing Arts and started playing music. Um, when you grow up in New York, you can get a fake ID pretty young, pretty easily. <laughs> and so I was looking for places to perform and I started playing in bars and stuff and then um, realized that they realized how old I was and I started playing in the subways. Um, and that really helped me kind of get this understanding of just how universal music is. And I think that that's something, I don't know if, if um, you guys are selling primarily in the U.S., which even just in our country, I've toured all over this country, <laughs> and people are very different in rural Missouri versus rural Texas versus metropolitan Texas versus, you know, New York and Chicago and I've, all over. I've been to um, everything but about I've, I've been to many more states, but there's about 10 states that I've never performed in. Um, but I've performed in lots of different places and it's music is this connector and this bridge between um, people within our country and all over the world, even across language barriers, because it has that emotional connection and it immediately um, can probe and touch at, at that. Um, I was gonna play a song of my own to kind of introduce myself, but I don't know, um, I don't wanna go over too, too much, right? Are you guys all kind of wanting to keep this maybe just 20, 15, 20 minutes after the hour or any thoughts, Gerhardt? We're good. Well, why don't I share a song? Because my, my point with sharing it is that this is something that um, a large portion of my fans, English isn't their first language um, or um, they they don't even listen to this sort of type of music. I, I call my music like folk pop. It's but they'll they'll often be listening to other styles and not uh, necessarily be a fan of of folk singers. Um, and yeah, so I'll play a little bit of this is the title track to my last record called Street Lamp Musician and. And it's a song about growing up in New York City and watching my neighborhood change and watching um, the West Village where I grew up change. And I wanted to share this because it's, it's a storytelling song, which is in that folk vein. And I think music is a really great way to share our stories and sell with a story versus selling with um, the facts or the, you know, there's this vulnerability and stuff. So here's Street Lamp Musician. Um, I've tried to set up Zoom so it doesn't peak, but it might, because I have a very <laughs> dynamic voice. <laughs> so. Flowers and cigarettes 
on Hudson and Lincoln, jet black and jet set, to anywhere the father and here, just like the hardest upon my foot to the last of me you all seem to hear on me all want to listen to street musicians singing hard how feeling I sing a sorrow with a whole heart tomorrow Everything's gonna be alright Sneakers and high heels I watch them walk by me On the streets of my mind But I don't know the way to Shop trying to change it Faster than the seasons People try Thank you. Um, so that's True Light Musician. And um, I released this record a couple, a couple of years, a couple of years ago now. I have a new one that's coming out soon. But um, it's something that I've played for all different, all different types of people. And I wanted to say specifically in the subways. And it's the most, one of the most diverse cities in the world. Um, but it would, there were some few specific instances where people who I thought would not be fans of my music would come over and buy a CD. Everything from a couple who I saw once coming into, uh, I used to play a lot on 34th Street but beneath Madison Square Garden. And this one time this guy uh, and his girlfriend came down and they were fighting and he started smoking a cigarette and I'm a trained opera singer and I like hate cigarettes. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, uh, now he's smoking underneath. There's no ventilation. And, and they were just arguing and I was just singing. I was like, okay, I'm just going to sit in my space here and I'm sharing my songs. And um, they ended up calming down in the few minutes they were waiting for the train, listening to my music and um, coming over and he tipped me, I think, and took a card and stuff. And there have been other times where... Um, uh, there was a woman with a full burqa, full um, a Muslim woman who came over and she also bought a CD 
Um, there was a homeless man once who came over and said, I've been listening to you all night. I want to uh, give you everything I have and poured his paper cup full of coins into my case. There's been a few instances like that um, throughout. I've played in the subway for about, I still, I live in California now, but um, I've played in the subway still when I go back to New York um, for almost 18 years. I don't know exactly. Let me think. But um, there's been so many times where people who I wouldn't think would connect with me or would connect with each other. There's been times where on platforms, people have started singing along. Um, and especially in New York where people are um, always closed off and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not uh, the opposite of curious, like the, uh, worrisome that someone else is trying to get <laughs> yeah it's, it's an interesting place to <laughs> I think that open heart that I try to have with as a musician is something that people can use a lot in sales um, because it's coming from a place where you're genuinely trying to help someone and I've used it before I was a full-time musician I worked um, when I graduated college as a assistant to a um, pretty popular makeup artist and artist um, and she had a shop in Soho and I would manage the shop and run the shop. And, um, someone came in once who said, I'm just waiting for a friend and I don't wear makeup. Like, well, first she said, what, what kind of store is this? Is it a makeup store? Is it an art store? And I said, well, it's both actually. The makeup artist, um, also is a painter. And she said, well, I don't like makeup. I don't ever wear makeup. And she started walking around, um, and someone had said to me, I'm not, I don't think of myself as someone who's necessarily good at sales. And I definitely was not good at sales at 20, 21 years old. Um, and I said to her for some reason, because uh, a few weeks prior, a friend of mine had said, just talk to them like you're, they're your friend. There's no like pretense. It's just, we're just all human beings. And I said, can I put on, I saw her striking blue eyes and I said, can I just try some stuff on you for fun if you're waiting anyway? And I did and um, had no, I, I wasn't paid on commission. There's no like push for me to try to get her to leave there buying things, but she left there buying a silver eyeshadow, a purple eyeliner and an eyeliner pencil because, and, and those are wild colors <laughs> for someone who doesn't wear makeup. If you guys don't know, these are all guys in here, but um yeah, so um, music's an international language, and I think that it can help us with selling, um, for sure. Um, I want to talk a lot today about leadership and about group mentality. Um, and I performed for an event last year for Capital Group, um, and we actually took the words of um, the famous uh, song let's call the whole, whole thing off and rewrote the words so that it made sense for them um, as a company and how they communicate and they have very specific language they use. Um, and I think that there's a long history of music being used everywhere from, um, you know, in the military and in, at sporting games, um, in church and, and different, you know, different religious backgrounds, music's used a lot. It's, it's a, form of storytelling and folk music and in Irish music. And um, if we can tap into that and use that, uh, those songs to communicate our message to our, um, to our, my, my lingo is so bad, not our, to our, our either our employees or our fellow, um, <laughs> what's it called when you have, I'm sorry, you guys. Um, when you're working with someone, but um, I wanted to play you this and see if, I, if you kind of can, can tap into it more. We took a familiar melody, so that familiar, familiarity helps. Um, and there's also songs um, that are developed fully out for, for companies, like um, Mary Kay has a song that everyone learns when they work for Mary Kay called the Mary Kay Enthusiasm Song. Um, and I'm sure you guys all, if you're sports fans, love like We Are the Champions or We Will Rock You, all those songs. 
All right, so here's Words Matter at Capital Group. And I, I even wrote something for the lesser known intro to the song. Mm -hmm. What's in a word? Quite a lot, actually. So that we achieve results consistently as we manage our shareholder success. Our clients expect to work with the best. They say trading and we say investing. They say performance and we say results. Trading, investing, performance, results. Let's use our words wisely. They say customer and we say client. They play the market and we make investments. Customer, client, market, investments. Words matter at capital group. And oh, when we're clear with our words, we're built to last. And oh, capital aligns with our clients' success. They buy and sell, we invest long term. They say products, we say investments. Products, investments, buy and sell long term. Let's use our words wisely. They say advisor, we say counselor. They look at wants, we think about needs. Advisor, counselor, wants versus needs. Words matter at capital group. And oh, when we're clear with our words, we're built to last. And oh, capital aligns with our clients' success. They say trading, and we say investing. They say performance, and we say results. Trading, investing, performance, results. Let's use our words wisely. So that's a fun song that we, we used for a, um, a yearly group uh, retreat that they did. I performed on one of the evenings there and everyone sang along. We all, we all, um, we gave out uh, copies of the lyrics and everyone's pretty, most people are pretty familiar with that tune. Um, and there were parts that were repeated so people could chime in. Um, but it was just a great way if there's newer employees or um, I think sometimes when you're working on something for a long term, it can get stale and um, music's just a way to put new, in, invigorate it and new um, passion behind something. Um, okay, sorry, I'm just seeing the chat. Okay, so yeah i wanted to to say too there's also ways where music can um help share ideas that maybe are not going to be popular with folks um or it's it's interesting i mean especially now we're in such a divisive time um in our country's history and and in in past times like this there have been songs that helped people understand um the growth they need to do um and also for an artist this is just something that came to mind not something i was planning on sharing but as an artist when you have an artist who breaks out one of the interesting things about a breakout song and someone kind of becoming a star is that there's a song as part of that and you have a idea of who that person is based on that song that they release it, it, brands them i mean think of Katy perry's i kissed a girl and then um a couple years later some of her you know other songs which are less off of center you know but still keep shaping what your view is of her as an artist um i know not everybody likes Katy perry i'm just giving you an example i think most people can know um, um so 
I'm going to skip over one of the songs that I was thinking of because I did. Does anyone have any questions? How did you sell that gig that you had with uh, Bon Jovi? How did I sell at it? No, you no. Know, how did you sell yourself so that, uh, did that come to you or did you have a- um, Well, that was a, that was a contest that I won. Um, but I think for the audience, I mean, maybe that's a more interesting look at it is that I'm, I actually love being the opening act when I've opened for different people and I've opened for a really diverse range of people from Bon Jovi to Wyclef to J.D. Souther and Dave Mason, like Folky, Lucy Kaplansky, different people. Um, I will tailor my set to fit the audience and the brand of the artist I'm opening for. Um, I used to open for Richard Cheese too a lot, if anyone knows who he is. Uh, but yeah, he, I, uh, I sold to the audience. I mean, I think I, in music, unfortunately, one of the things that you don't have going for you is that it's often listened to passively, even at a concert, especially where you're the opening act. Um, maybe they're listening to the music, but they're not knowing that it's you necessarily. And so I repeated my name throughout the set. Um, I made sure I was really active and engaged. I, I kind of just made myself available. And I don't know that that would necessarily be sales. It's more of like a marketing and a connection kind of thing. Um, I, hire, I did hire people to stand outside the arena and pass out um, cards and stuff afterwards and um, get people to join my email list and get people, give them a percentage off on my merch and a couple of free downloads if they join my email list that were even more primo than the ones I gave away. Um, yeah, so those were some of the ways I did that. It's, I kind of, I don't know that I think of that as sales. I'm always looking to maximize opportunities. Um, and it's interesting, one of the things that w was brought up for me um, when someone, when we were, when we were in your, in your talk, Gerhardt, when we were talking about, um, disappointments and a client not working with you, and that happens from time to time when I do corporate events and weddings, either because they want something else or, you know, all the things you think could have gone wrong. But in November, in November, I was asked to play on ESPN and um, learned uh, their theme song and was going to be part of the, you know, things they cut away to during the game. And we filmed it and everything and it ended up not airing. Um, but I had told everyone about it. I was so disappointed. I felt like a failure. I felt like, oh, I hope people don't think I made this up. Um, Maybe, maybe my performance wasn't that good. Maybe they thought uh, I shouldn't have been. I did like an opera version of, um, let's see if I, I haven't played this song in a while, but if you guys watch football. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Monday Night Football theme song. take on it and I was really proud of myself um, for arranging what's usually an entire orchestra into you know this two minute guitar vocal piece um, and I have a, a couple things to say about it I sports are you know not really happening right now they can't go easily film anyone else and they have the rights to air it for our, another six months so I plan on being, hey, there's nothing else on ESPN. Please air my piece. Because <laughs> it could be seen by about 16 million people or so at the, the game that it was supposed to be performed for. 
Um, but I was also just thinking a lot on, um, thinking a lot while you were speaking about something I was already going to talk about, but in a later point on the third lesson about how we, as musicians, when, when you're learning an instrument, you really have to having to sit there and repeat something and problem solve. And when you're learning a piece of music as a classical musician, especially, but even if you're studying something for a choir or a pop song you want to learn or just a popular tune, you have to break it down and learn the rhythm and the melody and the words. And what do those words mean to you? You can't just sing them. Um, I was going to play Big Yellow Taxi, but that's the song I cut out. But it was, that's one of those songs that, you know, everyone's heard of Big Yellow Taxi uh, by, by Joni Mitchell. It's the, uh, I paved paradise and put up a parking lot. But what, what do those words mean to me? What do they mean now? Um, and putting it in my voice so I can sing it and it's communicated well and it sounds great. And I think that that's part of, you know, even if you're being trained by someone, um, a, even being told by my friend, just talk to them like they're your friend. You know, when I was trying to sell that person on makeup that she said, I never buy, I never wear makeup, I never buy makeup. I can't just think, I have to, I have to put that into my own experience and heart. It's not, it's not that you can just regurgitate something. And so I think music helps us get to that in a deeper way, both by learning an instrument and really diving deep in music and just by appreciating the music we have um, in our everyday and ex exposing ourselves to new music. Um, and that's something I was going to get today. Let me see where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, this is what I was about to do to talk about. Sorry. Can I, um, uh, can I, um, can I ask a quick question? Sure. Uh, um, Mark, what, what kind of music do you listen to that gets you energized? Uh, well, I listen to a, I listen to a wide range of music actually. Um, I was listening to one genre. I actually changed it over to uh, a different genre a few years back because the radio was just playing the same things over and over. So, um, but I listen to hip hop, rap that that gets me energized. That's a good something for me. Good to, to, if I'm going on a long drive versus if I'm like. Going home at the end of the day, I'll, I'll listen to something a little slower, um, something a little bit more where my mood is more calm because I'm already I've already done with the work day. I don't need that energy, if you will. So I'm going to relax. So I listen to something or have me more in a relaxed mood. It might be jazz, might even be classical music. It just depends. Yeah. What, yeah, what and about it's Megan. So, sorry. That's okay. Megan. Sure. So I, being from Montana, logically listen to hip hop and R&B music. <laughs> um, but I do, I listen to that when I want to kind of run and have more energy. And then um, when I'm feeling, when I'm homesick, honestly, when I want to feel more relaxed or comforted, I listen to country. Um, and I want to, I do, I also have to drop. So I just wanted to say thank you so much. Um, Natalie, this was super insightful. And Gerhard, thank you for the event. Um, so I'll drop and see everyone next week. My, my background, Natalie, I, I've, I've really enjoyed listening to you tell stories about your, your musical background and your history. Kind of, but my, my previous life, before I got involved in sales, back when I was in my early and mid-teens, uh, I was a DJ in the nightclubs. I used to run sound for bands. I traveled all around the country and the world uh, building big production shows. And so I got to work with a lot of different types of entertainers and different types of, of music. But one of the things that I've always had a passion for is, is getting the, the crowd involved in what's going on. And so I did a lot of public address announcing for football teams and various sporting events at different venues around the country. And so the music that I listen to that when I need to get uh, pumped up and excited is typically – High energy, you know, it could be hip hop, it could be rock and roll, but, but they call it stadium rock, I think, in a, in a lot of venues. But the things that, that, uh, that I play that, that get me kind of pumped up, I, I like to put a lot of um, emphasis into the lyrics and the words that are being used to, to give you a positive insight. Uh, I also like to, um, 
I, I like to listen to music that I know is being produced and, and, and recorded and, and sang by people who really have good talent. I, I, a lot of groups that I did sound for, they, they could put on a decent show visually, but musically they weren't real talented. And so they're, they're, they're was kind of shallow as to what they were doing. But, uh, but I, I've got a, a pretty wide range of music. My, my iPhone has got probably 3,000 songs on it. Uh, everything from country to rock to R&B to um, easy listening, uh, you name it, I've got it, you know, it's on here. So. <laughs> so there's actually been studies that have shown that when you listen to music that's pure and that's not made by a computer, your heart rate and your, um, at, a cellul at a cellular level, it affects you more than if you're listening to something made by a computer. So I wonder if that's part of what inspires you to listen to stuff that's actually by talented people is because it's less, but there's so much they can do nowadays with technology to make something more in tune or to, it's, if I, I, I can't show you examples, but where they can take a pitch down here and move it to like, and it will sound like a human being, but it actually, our hearts and our brains are smarter than that, even if we're not cognitively picking it up. It's, it's cutting through. And those kinds of sounds aren't as relaxing and aren't as, um, yeah, able to connect with us. Well, but uh, uh, I think it would be a good uh, time to share the story when uh, your mom was suffering from Alzheimer's. Oh, okay. I was gonna share that next week. <laughs> Oh, I have a whole plan, <laughs> but, um, yeah, sure. I, well, yeah, it is a good time to share that story. I, um, my mom, a big part of my story the last eight or 10 years has been, um, going through Alzheimer's with my mom and I lost her almost two years ago now. Um, but music was something that really connected us. And let me see, I did have some notes about this already that I was going to share. Um, yeah, so I wrote a song when we first started going down the road with Alzheimer's together. Um, I knew we sort of weren't, sort of weren't going to talk about it. Um, and we didn't have a very good relationship before this. Um, but it's obviously devastating. It's the hardest thing to watch someone you love go through. And I had thankfully written a song with a friend of mine. Um, and I was going to mention this earlier, like if you can tell with that Street Lamp Musician song, so much of my writing is done as a therapy um, and a way to sign up, sort of get clear about what I feel and what I'm trying to say and raise my vibration past something by processing it. Um, and I was going to talk to you a little bit today about how songs can, you know, connect with us to, to emotions and to things that we don't, aren't comfortable going to um, without a song to help us know that we're actually going to get through it and to know that we're not alone. Um, so I wrote a song called the lights upstairs that, um, helped me throughout the entire journey with my mom to the point where she didn't even know who I was. Um, I can play that song and I want to share that music actually with her really, um, it was amazing to watch how she, if you've, learned much about Alzheimer's if anyone has unfortunately gone through that with someone they love. Um, there's a lot of studies done about how music can connect to people's brains who are unresponsive to their loved ones who, you know, don't have cognitive function function anymore, but we'll start seeing the words along to songs. And there was someone performing in her home that she was living in once and he was singing um, una poco de gracia, una poco de gracia, se necesito arriba, arriba. And my mom didn't really speak Spanish, but she turned to me and she goes, poco means little. And she was clapping along and this, she already thought that I was her neighbor taking her out shopping and didn't know who I was at that point. But I was like, she knows what poco means. Um, and she would sing along to nursery rhymes with me. Um, oops. There's a lot of, a lot of people have said, you know, share songs of the era that someone was brought up in. But for me, I found with my mom, um, that nursery rhymes were the thing that she remembered. 
So I'll play the lights upstairs. And uh, this is the song that I wrote for her that continued to remind me of its message, which is what um, is my favorite parts of music too, is that um, can help us. And I was about to start saying how it can help us get into this higher vibrational mindset. Um, and sometimes it's so hard to go from a place of um, the three layers. I lost my notes. Oh, it's under here. Um, the, the, you know, the fog mentality to the uh, comfort zone to the growth zone. But sometimes it can just, if you can get yourself 10% more, and then from there, just keep going up. And songs can do that. And I was going to talk to you guys about having like a theme song um, for yourself or for your family or even for your kids if they're in a rough place. Um, and this one helped remind me when I was going through so much with her that no matter how many memories she was losing, I could still keep them in my mind and in my heart. And that's the message of the song. And by singing it so much, it reminded me of that. So here it is, The Lights Upstairs. I found the earth next to the ice cream. I found the cheese next to the bread. The milk is in the pantry with the crackers getting warm. Things are getting scrambled in your head. Darling, nobody cares. The lights aren't on upstairs. The words don't come so easy after a while. Call me another name. It don't cause me any pain. This is how it goes. Your mind is not on track. You can lose all of the melodies you sang to me in town. But they're still in your eyes and the bluebird knows the lines. I called you up for supper. And you showed up for lunch. Look at Maddie Sweet in your pearls and Sunday best. Time, I guess it doesn't matter much. Darling, nobody cares if the lights aren't on upstairs. The words don't come so easy after a while. Call me another night. It don't cause me any pain. This is how it goes. Your mind is not on track. You can lose all of the melodies you sang to me in town. But they're still in your eyes and the bluebird knows the lies. You think it's so much worse than it is. Baby, you ain't lost all that you had. And I'll give you space to be the way you are. There's still good days and the bad ones ain't that bad. No, 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 no. Nobody cares if the lights aren't on upstairs. The words don't come so easy after a while. Call me another night. It don't cause me any pain. This is how it goes. Your mind is not on track. You can lose all of the melodies you sang to me in town. But they're still in your eyes and the bluebird knows the lines. You can lose all of the memories you with me, my dear. But they're still in my heart and the blue. 
birds in my ear. Awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I was thinking too, I really used uh, that song, both the writing it and the constant re repetition of performing it um, to reframe what was a really negative situation into a positive one, into, um, I mean, I would even still say it's, it's damn near impossible <laughs> to think positively about Alzheimer's, but um, it, that's about as positive as I think you can get is that we're gonna, you know, I'm gonna hold on to these memories. And I did have help. I had a co-writer on that song who had a really good relationship with her grandmother who had Alzheimer's as well. And um, she brought a lot of the lightness of the spirit of those lyrics. Um, but yeah, it's, that's the power of music with with helping lift our spirits and i um i really liked hearing everyone talk about how they're listening to different genres and i wanted to speak to that a little bit as well um because i think you know sometimes we can get to in our lane as far as what you know our go-to's and our routine is and especially right now during coronavirus while we're our routines are all completely they're changed and we probably have more of this coming in terms of like what you know next month will look like we don't know you know if we'll be able to be ordering takeout or sending our kids to school or all the, all the unknowns of the future right now um and so music's really um when i was listening to gerhard talk before about the different ways um to to work with your mindset music can be a almost like a hack, almost like a little, uh, what's it called? A short, a shortcut to those, um, better ways of thinking and to getting yourself out of a rut. Or if you, if you used it as you went to work, as you drove back and forth and you're no longer driving to the office, what does that look like now? Like, can you use hip hop or rock? Um, basically those songs with like, uh, Gu big guitars like long like big um drums and, and fast energy big rhythm fast rhythm are the kind of songs that typically do like lift up your energy um and then at the end of the day listening to more calm songs a lot of times instrumental music because words can be distracting especially if you if you are processing and letting things go um even Tibetan bowls, even thinking outside of the box and what exactly the music is. Could it be just nature sounds? Um, things like that to, to calm yourself down. Um, personally, it's been something that's only changed in my life in the last couple of years, but I've started listening to classical music in the background all the time, unless I'm actually actively performing or learning a piece of music or practicing. There's always classical music on. And I'm sure you guys have seen, there's so many studies done on how it helps us focus. Um, I've even very recently, my cat's been very ill and I've noticed that he, when the classical music is on, will go sit right next to the speaker. And there's something about it that he likes listening. So it could be as simple as just the vibrations coming, you know, from it. But um, the songs are indescript enough or familiar enough that they're not distracting. And I think that's the big, the big one for our focus is that you can still listen to acoustic guitar or instrumental piano music, but it just has to be at a, at a volume and, and a form that's not make you start you know, singing along or something like that and take you out of your focus, productive mindset. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to know, I was going to ask you guys to pop in the chat and let me know if there's some, a song you've had that's moved you so much that you've cried or, or felt like, um, or the opposite of that, that you've had a song lift you up. And if you want to mention that song, um, and it's not, um, 
it's not a bad thing. I've, I've been on the road numerous times and I've had a song where I'm going, going, going. Like often when I'm on tour, I'm waking up at, you know, ungodly hours in order to get to whatever next town I need to be in to perform, to go to sleep after the show, after talking to fans and everything and making sure I know where I'm supposed to be the next day and stuff on like no sleep, lots of caffeine, like always running just on the edge and, um, and not processing my feelings. And so a lot of times that can happen where a song can come across, you know, from the radio or somewhere that really cuts to you the heart of something you're going through. Um, I haven't seen anyone pop in the chat to say if there's anything, but even if you're keeping it to yourself, um, there, um, I'm going to shy away from tapping on what Jeff just shared in case my video goes away. <laughs> um, but I was going to say there's uh, what I wanted to suggest is to take note of that. I was going to give you a jump ahead to what my prep for your next class is, um, is to change the world. Is that one, was that one that makes you sad or that lifts you up? Uh, the, the um, I wanted you to just, both the phenomenon was it was i enjoyed that movie tremendously and that was the song that clapton did it was the, the kind of the title song from the movie but uh i've always always listened to that song whenever if i'm driving it's in my top 10 list on my phone as far as songs uh, songs that i listen to regularly but it's just just a good message for me to is uplifting and yeah and, uh, and challenges me to do better yeah and there there are songs like that that we probably have been using without noticing and so that was my as you go about these next two weeks before we meet again to start looking for um, looking at the music you're listening to, having an awareness of, are you already, are you being moved specifically by what, by different songs and what those songs are? And then thinking, what is it in the song that's, that is selling me? Am I sold by the lyric? Am I sold by the beat and the rhythm or the melody or just the overall, you know, feeling? Um, and um, if you're not already using music as part of your day or routine, you know, think about, especially now that your routine's been upended, if it was part of your routine with work, how you, how you can use it as part of your routine. Um, I think as we go through this time in our history, it's, I wanted to also mention like music is tapping into one of your five senses. And you have, a lot of times we talk about, you know, how we're gonna use our food and exercise and, the way we're moving our body to help us adjust and, and level up our mindset. And music is another one of those hacks that can kind of, or, or part of this onion of like constantly looking at how you can get 10% better, get 5% better, 20% better, whatever it looks like for you. Um, I've gone in all different directions, so I need to make sure. <laughs> Um, chatted about everything I wanted to talk about um, yeah. yeah and so sometimes that might mean you know branching out and putting on the I just listen to NPR all the time in the background playing classical music to help me focus um, maybe it's something you try for one or two days you know in the next two weeks it's just putting on uh, the classical music station by you or a playlist um, and seeing how that feels and at a volume that's almost intel sometimes it's almost intelligible it's just very quiet um, it's I do really think that music is such a personal choice that it's one of the things one of the things you kind of need to do is kind of try some things out and see what works for you because cl classical music itself is also a blanket statement like Opera might not do it for you, but again, classical violin or instrumental music might. Um, or the, you know, the opposite. You're like, I actually just love listening to acoustic guitar or something like that. I read something a while back about TikTok and those kinds of different platforms where people make those dance videos to music. And a lot of what people connect to and what blows up there's more of the words I and you versus like we and me. It is very personal and songs that do speak to someone's specific 
you know, experience versus like a collective experience, right. um, those can touch us deeper because we insert ourselves into them. Um, See what what uh, what interests me in this um, in this conversation is how can we create like a playlist for ourselves? Uh, yeah of music that energizes us, music that calms us down, um, music, music that helps us think and, uh, and or be creative so we get in a creative zone. Um, are there playlists like that? There are playlists like that and I think that you can find those playlists really easily on Spotify and, and Apple Music or create your own and that's really where I suggest that's what my goal is and why I'm saying I want you to start paying attention to what it is that is selling you on some, a song and, and not just, I mean, it's almost more so than a playlist is I think the, the genome of Pandora is a better, um, a better platform because it's very specific for each person. What, you know, like I, I listen to country, what did you call it, country rap? And I would just be like, whoa. Like that to me would never pump me up. But I don't know if anyone knows who Wheeler Walker Jr. is. I'm a big Wheeler Walker Jr. fan. He makes inappropriate country, <laughs> country songs. Um, and I would kind of put that in that country, what, what did you call it, country hip hop? That's not hip hop, but it's not in the wheelhouse of anything else I listen to, but it serves its purpose of making me think cognitively about, wow, I can't believe you put lyrics together like that. And, and I don't like the music. I like the lyrics. Um, and then there's other stuff I listen to where it's the singer, you know, it's, and there's my favorite artists are Patty Griffin and Paolo Nutini, and I'm connecting with them because their voices are so full and expressive and emotive. Um, and the, those are songs that help me kind of meditate on music. Um, I think it's just a very personal thing for people. Um, even for me with classical music, and that's why I was mentioning that in terms of like, I couldn't just put on a classical playlist and I'm, I'm realizing that as I spend more time at home and I'm usually going and coming so much that the classical station has been on, but not thought about too much, but I, I'm going to get to a point where I make my own playlist of classical music that I'm not. I, I grew up singing so many different art songs and arias that will come on the, the NPR and then I'll start singing them or even the overtures to Carmina Burana or they had the overture to uh, the Pirates of Penzance, not Pirates of Penzance. Is that the name of that? Those things are distracting for me and I'm not able to sit there and plow through my emails or write a blog or um, get something else done and have that on. I, I mean, it's, and it depends. Like some people, I grew up in New York City where I often went to coffee shops and I found it easier to focus when there's stuff going on around me. And so I kind of like the talking, the calming and PR talking. I mean, and that's the way I think of it as part of your, your oral, you know, there's, there's music going on. There's, that sense of sound in your life is how I want you to think of music, not as just um, songs on a playlist or pieces that will be put together on a playlist. We need to wrap it up because um, we went yeah. quite um, over time. I want to thank everybody for participating <laughs> and chiming in. And uh, it was a great experience for me. So um, I want to Thanks, give everyone. Mark, uh, one word. What uh, what did you think of today? I think it was great. Um, uh, I really like what Nadia was mentioning about you know putting something in your own words, you know, rather than just kind of repeating it or memorizing it. So, I guess that's one of my. I mean, along with everything else, that's one of my big takeaways. Just kind of making sure I put things into my own words. Uh, maybe have a little bit more meaning and more connect more. Thank you, Mark. <clears throat> I would have to say uh, inspiring would be my word for today, Gerhard. I, I like this this idea of, of of clearing the mindset of all the crap so that you can focus on things that inspire you. I like that. Awesome. Jonathan? 
invigorating. So very similar to Jerome. Awesome. You changed your shirt. <laughs> and Natalie, what do you think? What's the, the one word we're going to leave with? I'm honored and excited. That's not one word. I'm, I'm excited. There's so much here. It's hard to it's hard to, uh, to break this down because it's music. I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. The All music right. touches on so much. So yeah, it's a hack for, for us in the best way. That word's not the uh, best it's The music is a hack for happiness. How is that? Yeah, I, I, it bridges oh. that the emotional and the physical and the cognitive you know, narrative as well, it can really connect and bridge across those things, and um, and so I think I think it's great that we're doing a few classes on this to kind of unpack it because it is <laughs> going in so many it does go in so many different directions. All right, thanks everybody. See you next week. Thanks everyone. Thank